In this problem, we're going to solve this initial value problem, so solution. So the first thing we'll do is find a solution to this differential equation. This is a linear differential equation with constant coefficients. So the first step is to write down the characteristic or auxiliary equation. Because it's the second derivative, we'll write down m squared, just match it with the derivative, plus, and then 25y, that's just going to become 25. And this is equal to 0. To solve this equation, we'll just subtract 25 from both sides. That will give us negative 25. Then we can take the square root, take the square root. So we get m equals plus or minus 5i. So whenever we have complex conjugates, we want to think of them in the form alpha plus or minus beta i. So this is really 0 plus or minus 5i. So this is alpha plus or minus beta i. So you see alpha is 0 and beta is equal to 5. Recall the formula says that the general solution to this DE will be given by C1 e to the alpha x cosine of beta x plus C2 e to the alpha x sine of beta x. So here alpha is 0, so e to the 0 is 1, so you don't have to worry about that. So it'll just be C1 cosine 5x. And then again, e to the 0 is 1, so we just get C2 sine 5x. So this is the general solution to this DE, but here we have two initial conditions, and so this is called an initial value problem. So what we will do now is use these two conditions to pick a particular solution from this infinite family of solutions, right? There's infinitely many solutions here uh, because C1 and C2 can vary. This lets you pick a particular one, hence the name particular solution. So before we do that, let's take the derivative. So the C1 is a constant. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. And then we have a 5x inside the cosine. So we'll have to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 5. So let's go ahead and put that out front. So minus 5 C1 sine of 5x. Same thing here. The derivative of sine is cosine. And then we'll have the 5 from the chain rule. Let's go ahead and put that out front as well. So 5 C2 cosine of 5x. Okay, now we can use our initial conditions. Let's go ahead and use the first one, y of 0 equals 5. So we're using it on this piece here. So we have y of 0 equals c1 times the cosine of 0 plus c2 times the sine of 0, and that's equal to 5. Cosine of 0 is 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So we simply get, oh, that's nice, C1 equals 5. I'm going to put that in a box. Now let's use the other condition. So y prime of 0 equals negative 7. So plugging in 0, we get negative 5 C1 sine 0 plus 5c2 cosine 0. And this is equal to negative 7. Sine of 0 is 0. Cosine of 0 is 1. So we get 5c2 equals negative 7. 5c2 equals negative 7. So c2 is going to be negative 7 fifths. So now that we have c1 and c2, we can just plug them back into our solution. So our final answer, I'll write it here, will be y equals, let's see, so c1 was 5, so 5, we're looking here, uh, cosine of 5x, and then c2 was negative 7 fifths, that almost looks like a 3, it's a 7, sine of 5x. So this would be the particular solution. This would be the solution to the initial value problem. Again, 
what's happening is when you solve this differential equation, you get infinitely many solutions. And these conditions allow you to pick one from that infinitely, infinite collection. This first condition says that your solution should pass through 0, 5. The second condition says that the slope at 0 should be negative, sep negative 7. So you're finding the solution that passes through this point and has this particular slope. I hope this video has been helpful.